Nanim Nahir Gusun Vik Gusun Spirit Neve Amen. The Lord be with you. We begin today's ceremonies with the anointing of the sick. And so I invite you now to pray for those amongst us who are burdened by sickness. Let us pray to the Lord for those who are about to be anointed. May this anointing be a source of strength and healing for them. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to free us of our burdens and forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to give yourself so that we might be healed and strengthened. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had come down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. A leper now came up and bowed low in front of him. Sir, he said, if you want to, you can cure me. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, Of course I want to. Be cured. And his leprosy was cured at once. Then Jesus said to him, Mind you do not tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering prescribed by Moses as evidence for them. The Gospel of the Lord. We are in the presence of the same Jesus Christ today. So with faith, let us pray for our sick brothers and sisters. Lord, watch over our brothers and sisters and keep them in your love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, relieve the sufferings of the sick and elderly here present. Christ, have mercy. Give life and health to all on whom we lay our hands in your name. Lord, have mercy. In a moment, we will have the imposition of hands. The laying on of hands has always been a way of imploring God to send down his mercy and his Holy Spirit on his people. As the priests now turn towards the congregation for the laying on of hands, I invite all of you to join in silent prayer for those who are to be anointed. We thank God, Father, Son, and Spirit for his healing presence and for the oil of the sick which we use in this sacrament. Our response to this prayer of thanksgiving is, Blessed be God who heals us in Christ. Christ. Praise to you, God, the Almighty Father, you sent your Son to live among us and bring us salvation. Blessed be God who heals us in Christ. Praise to you, God, the only begotten Son. You humbled yourself to share in our humanity and you heal our infirmities. Blessed be God who heals us in Christ. Praise to you, God, the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Your unfailing power gives us strength in our bodily weakness. Blessed be God who heals us in Christ. God of mercy, ease the sufferings and comfort the weakness of our brothers and sisters whom the church anoints with this holy oil. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. A word of instruction before the anointing. It is important to understand that this is a sacrament of the church and not a simple blessing. 
For this reason, only those whose health and mind or body is seriously impaired by sickness or old age receive the sacrament. I would ask especially maybe to respect that today, given such a large crowd here, and for the sick and the elderly. Therefore, you should not ask for it unless you are genuinely sick or weakened by old age. Normally, the sacrament should be received only once a month. So those who are sick and about to receive the sacrament are asked to please remember the following. Please give the priest your Christian name so that he can call you by name as he brings you in a personal way Christ's healing love. The priest will anoint you on the forehead and your response to the anointing prayer is Amen. He will then anoint you on the hands, on the palms of your hands, and your response again will be Amen. So we ask you not to hold anything in your hands uh, during the anointing. And all of us will be joined together in prayer uh, for those who are about to be anointed. Just for all those people standing over here, make a different anointing. There's plenty of seats over this side here. If you make your way around the back of the basilica, those especially who are standing, if you can make your way around, plenty of seating at my right over here in chapels one and two. <clears throat> so as usual, for those who wish to be anointed, those here in chapel three, if you remain seated, the chapel in front of the sanctuary, remain seated where you are, the priest will move through the rows there. Those in the other chapels who want to be anointed, if you come forward to behind the green chairs, Please take time with that, especially with such a large crowd uh, today. Uh, if we, it may not be possible to get to everybody who wants to be anointed, we'll do our best. And uh, when you're coming forward, please come forward through the wide centre aisle of your chapel. Please do not come forward through the narrow side aisles by the walls. Uh, leave those free for returning to your seats for ease of movement and health and safety. Those in wheelchairs, if you remain where you are, a priest will come to you. And did anybody in able to come forward, let us know a priest will come to you also. Thank you.
So now, friends, can I have your attention, please, for a moment? As we're coming very close to three o'clock, we're going to call a halt to the anointings because we need to we need to start our mass at three exactly. Otherwise, as you can well imagine, uh, we will be here for the remainder of the afternoon. So uh, I'll be asking the priests shortly to return to their seats and also to yourselves as well to uh, return to your own seats. And can I ask you, only those who are in need of anointing, not everybody in the Basilica needs anointing, so only those of you who are in need of anointing should come forward. So can I ask you to begin to take your seats now again because we will not get through the enormous number of people for anointing here this afternoon. Okay, so I'm going to ask the priests, fathers, if you'd like to return, please, to your seats now. And I'd ask everybody else to return to their seats, because not everybody is going to get anointed, unfortunately, this afternoon, just due to the sheer size of the numbers and also, uh, also the numbers of our own priests as well. We don't have too many. So can I ask the priests now to stop with the anointing and to return to, your, to the back of the altar, please? Now, friends, what's, we're going to open the doors at the back of the basilica so that uh, if you'd, all the doors at the back of the basilica will be opened so that maybe if you'd like to, those of you who are standing might be more comfortable to stand there. You'll still see the ceremony here in the sanctuary. So the doors at the very back of each of the chapels where I'm pointing to now will be opened. And uh, it's a beautiful afternoon, so you will still be able to hear and see the ceremony that's taking place here in the sanctuary. Uh, if you'd like to use outside as well. It just gives you a little bit more breathing space and, and, and more room to stand. Okay, so just before we begin our celebration of the Eucharist, to welcome you all this afternoon. Fantastic to see so many of you here with the Legion of Mary. It's always a wonderful pilgrimage, and I welcome all of you wherever you've come from, near or far, all the buses that we've seen come in to knock from every part of the country, north, south, east, and west, and also groups here from outside of the state as well, from Britain and abroad. I welcome the organiser of today's pilgrimage, Alice Creighton, uh, from the Legion of Mary office in Dublin, yeah. uh, and I also uh, welcome the president of the Concilium, uh, Sheila Nye who's here with us, 
our priests that are celebrate, celebrating the Mass as well surrounding the, the sanctuary and here in the sanctuary with me, along with Father Patrick Burke, the Master of Ceremonies this afternoon, Father Bede McGregor and also Father Melville Wright, who has a group from Liverpool here in the Blessed Sacrament Shrine in Liverpool. You're most welcome. Our chief celebrant and our preacher this afternoon Bishop Brendan Kelly, the Bishop of O'Connery. We welcome Bishop Brendan this evening, or this afternoon, to the Basilica. You're very welcome, Bishop Brendan, and thank you for being here with us to celebrate this wonderful, uh, wonderful occasion. I apologize to those of you who have not been able to receive the anointing, but uh, as you can see, just, just the sheer physic physical ability to do that would certainly put back the mass here by about a half an hour, by the look of, of, of the crowds. Now, you can, we're dealing with crowds here in not a long, long time, so when I put that kind of a time limit on it, it's near enough there. About 20 minutes to a half an hour would put back the ceremonies if we continued with that. So we apologize for that. And, uh, also, there is a special part of the celebration, of course, where we have a Eucharistic healing set, um, uh, with the Blessed Sacrament after the Mass, just towards the end of the Mass here in the Basilica. So that's always a special moment as well in terms of healing of our minds, bodies, and spirits. And also, as you can see, some of the work has begun to, to uh, take place in the Basilica. You see Chapel 5 has been cordoned off and other work has begun because we begin with our refurbishment on the 13th of October, and certain necessary uh, preliminary work needed to, take needed to take place before that would happen in order to keep to timeline of refurbishment. And that's part of our Witness to Hope program, which uh, incorporates also the promotion of the Shrine at Home and Abroad, and also linking in with the new renewal of faith in the country with several renewal programs that we intend to uh, launch here at the Shrine. And so we'd ask you to do three things, to keep it in your prayers, to keep the, the project in your prayers, also to find out a little bit more about it in our information centre and from our very friendly volunteers on the grounds, and at some point, if you are able to do so, to help uh, to um, contribute towards the, uh, the wonderful work uh, that has been carried out here at the Shrine. So uh, just before we begin, we're we're, we're, we're good, we're, we're, we're on very good time. So we take this moment as a time of kind of quietness and reflection. Every one of us have come here today with this particular prayer need and intention. And so we take this particular time for, for that and we place it in the loving hands of our Heavenly Father. Also on this Sunday, actually 35 years ago, on this Sunday 35 years ago, um, uh, Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul II, came to the shrine 35 years ago today. Not to the date, the date is the 30th, but to the day, the last Sunday in, in September. So uh, we give thanks to the Lord as we remember that great and wonderful occasion for Knock. Also, welcome. There are a number of priests there that you may see that are signing towards uh, a number, uh, two um, deaf communities that are here, one from uh, Wicklow and the other from Belfast, and we warmly welcome them as well. So if you'd like to convey our welcome to them, Father. So we go like this. This, this lady here. With, with, with what? If there is a, I'm just told, if there is a group from Belfast here, there is a young woman here that is lost, and uh, she, she'd, uh, beside the handmaid where I'm pointing to at the moment, uh, just over here to my right hand side, so she 's uh, we believe with a group from uh, from uh, Belfast, and I think they 've located great okay that 's wonderful. Thank you very much indeed uh, so we are about to begin our our celebration of the Eucharist, and I welcome you all as i say so let 's just pause for a moment and come into the presence of the lord he 's here with us, and we place our intentions before him. And so now I invite Bishop Brendan to lead us in the celebration of the Eucharist. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. 
Nenem an eher agus an vik agus an spirit naive. Amen. Peace be with you. Go many diarib a fubble dealish day. Agus faultium rover fad da cohorihe go while an yegu and widder. Agus es ma a they live an shahinuv igrochwide. It is good to be with you all today on this last Sunday in September, and to welcome particularly all the members and supporters of the Legion of Mary from all over the country. Come to honor the one who is the light and inspiration of your lives. As Father Richard mentioned 35 years ago, on the day of the Legion of Mary pilgrimage, Pope John Paul II, now, of course, St. John Paul II, came to knock. Here I am, he said, at the goal of my pilgrimage to Ireland. Like ourselves, he came as a pilgrim, a pilgrim to Mary, mother of Christ, the mother of the church, and the queen of peace, the Holy Father reminded us. We ask you now, Lord, at the beginning of this Mass, for the gift of peace. As calling to mind our many sins and infidelities, we entrust ourselves to your mercy. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, the heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. You object. What the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel. Is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, his, he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law-abiding and honest, he deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. This is the word of the Lord. God fills me with joy.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. If our life in Christ meet anything to you, if love can persuade at all, or the spirit that we have in common, or any tenderness and sympathy, then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing which would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no conceit, but everybody is be self-effacing. Always consider the other person to be better than yourself so that nobody thinks of his own interest first, but everybody thinks of other people's interest instead. In your minds, you must be the same as Christ Jesus. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on the earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and said to the first, My boy, you go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not go, but afterwards thought better of it and went. The man then went and said, to the, said the same thing to the second, who answered, certainly so, but did not go. Which of the two did the fathers will? The first, they said. Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him. And yet the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Even after seeing that, you refused to think better of it and believe in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks. Thank you. 
It's wonderful to see a full church. And a joy to be here with you today. On the 14th of September in 1965, many of you will know this story. I'll repeat it because it's worth repeating. That's 49 years ago. Frank Duff quietly entered and took his place as an auditor at the final session of the Second Vatican Council. Cardinal Heenan of Westminster, who was speaking at the time, spotted him coming in and immediately announced his arrival to the entire assembly. Cardinal Sunans described what happened then. The 2,500 bishops rose to give him a warm and moving ovation. It was an unforgettable moment. The thanks of the universal church to the pioneer of the lay apostolate. For the past couple of years, the church has been celebrating the golden jubilee of that same great council. We have been returning to the council documents. There has been much talk of its impact or lack of impact. There is assessment and reassessment of all that has happened. There is much disagreement in the church in the past 50 years. Has the council lived up to its billing at the time. There has been a lot of talk, particularly about the spirit of the Vatican Council. Now, if we want to define the spirit of the Second Vatican Council, then we don't need, it seems to me, to look beyond that extraordinary moment when Frank Duff entered the council chamber in St. Peter's Basilica. The bishops of the entire church spontaneously rising in unison to give a standing ovation to this modest layman who had founded the Legion in the early 20s and had firmly guided it at that point for over 40 years. The spontaneous event spontaneous events often do this, speak more loudly than that which we plan. And it affirmed the central practical insight recovered by the Council and extensively teased out in its documents. The insight already being realized and thriving at that time in more than half the diocese of the world in the persons of the ordinary women and men of the Legion of Mary. The insight that the Church of Jesus Christ is the people of God, all together equally called to be apostles, and united together, clergy and laity, in being apostolic. The recovery of this fundamental centrality, in fact, of the sacrament of baptism and of the gift that it is and the call that it contains, we all, from the least to the greatest, have an apostolate. Different, yes, but equal before God and before Jesus. It's no wonder the bishops of the world rose up as one to applaud this man who was so much at the origin of the now widespread but largely hidden movement, the Legion of Mary. And no member ever receiving assent in payment and no member seeking any kind of recognition as the world sees it. 
and every member working for Jesus Christ and his body, the church. Everyone missionary of the mercy and love of God in action. Gladly obedient to Mary's last word in the gospel. Do whatever he tells you. We mentioned the Holy Father here in Knock 35 years ago in 1979. Every generation, he said, is like a new continent to be won for Christ. That's the sentence most quoted from his homily here in Knock. And isn't it more true today than ever it was 35 or 50 years ago? We could do no better in facing the enormous challenges for faith and church in Ireland today than to look again at the whole story of the Legion of Mary, at the insights and the organizational genius of the servant of God, Frank Duff. Whatever else, taking up the challenge of the now sainted John Paul II must be done together as people of God, priests, religious, and people all together, joyfully and in unison, like that great assembly of council fathers in St. Peter's Basilica at that moment on that September day, 49 years ago, when Frank Duff entered. The present Holy Father, Pope Francis, has captured the attention of the world in our own day, and we delight in that fact. And isn't it because his whole person, his every word, and particularly his every gesture and action, exudes joy and love for all humanity, no matter what its condition. The hope of God has always been that the joy of the gospel is what you and I and every baptized person will exude and incarnate for the world. Many years before the Council, Frank Duff and his legionaries were inspiring men and women, regardless of their station, with his affirmation that every Christian is nothing less than another Christ for his or her own time. That vision and affirmation is what inspired and continues to inspire legionaries to go out to meet others freely and voluntarily and with great joy to bring them the good news. The good news, not just in word, but the good news that they themselves have become in person. Jesus Christ alive in us for our times. That's why Edel Quinn, Alfie Lam, and Frank Duff himself are recognized now by the church as servants of God and will soon, we pray, be beatified and eventually canonized as saints of the church. However, we ourselves have known many hidden people in the Legion of Mary who are gone to God and no doubt are with him in heaven too. In my own first years as a priest, four decades ago, I became, and I can't remember how, the spiritual director to a presidium of men who used to run a night shelter for homeless men. I look back now on this small group of totally dedicated and very ordinary men 
most of whom had already at that time spent a lifetime in the Legion, and most of whom are now gone to God. I have rarely met such unassuming fidelity. They were the most important thing that happened to me in those early years. They put me to shame and hopefully knocked some of the, until then unconscious, arrogance of youth and education out of me. Week in, week out, they manned that shelter night after night, giving roof and bed and a bit of warmth and welcome and acceptance to these desolate down-at-heel men. They would give three, four, or even five nights a week sometimes, some weeks, whatever was necessary. I was hungry, and you gave me food. Thirsty, and you gave me drink. Homeless, and you sheltered me. To serve these men, they knew these brothers was to serve Jesus. And the last thing any of them would want would be for me now to name them or to name them ever in public. No notice. That was always fundamental. What a necessary witness that is in this crazy age of celebrity. I have no doubt they heard the Master's voice. Come, you who my Father has blessed. Take possession of the kingdom prepared for you. And I ask them now to be praying with us and for us today. It is in living out our call to be simply people of God that we become more and more like Christ. Actions speak louder than words. That's what our gospel is all about today. They speak what we are ourselves, as well as the love we bear to all people and our joy in their existence. The Psalms tell us that the Lord takes delight in his people, how deeply people need us to take delight in them, especially when they're down on their luck. And without us, how can they ever know the Lord's delight in them? I speak especially of those people whose lives have been damaged by circumstances or suffering or by being ignored. In the gospel, we find Jesus today. I tell you solemnly, he said, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. And St. Paul in the second reading tells us, always consider the other person to be better than yourself. He doesn't say there are any exceptions to that rule. And that's precisely the message the true legionary brings to the person he or she goes out to meet. That's what it is to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Remember the joy of Elizabeth at Mary's visit. Later on in that second reading, St. Paul tells us what Jesus himself actually did. He emptied himself of himself. To assume the condition of a slave, he became as men and women are. And he was humbler yet even to accepting death on a cross. He emptied himself. He came out of himself into your life, into my life, into life 
in every condition in which it is to be found. Even when that condition is at its most awful and abominable, into the lowest depths of our humanity, in order that we might be lifted up and discover his delight in us. There is no virtue in upward mobility. The traffic is all the other way with those who choose to be apostles, who take their baptism seriously, who simply love Jesus. We are here in Knock today because in 1879, in the pouring rain, she came here. She has stayed here. That's why we come. The people here were in dire straits in 1879. For Mary, too, the movement was downward to them in every sense, downward mobility. It's all that matters. All of this, lest we forget the simple truth that the Lord is with us always regardless of feeling or circumstance. She brought the Lamb of God with her to knock. Jesus, he who emptied himself for us and who will do so now again with us and through us, in the Eucharist we are about to celebrate. All of this so that our hope be renewed, that we never give in to despair or hopelessness. So we would remember that we are his beloved sons and daughters. And because he wants us to determine again to go out from here, and to be his mind and his heart, his hands and his body for the world, for the people of 2014. The apostolate, yes, is everything. We are that apostolate as individual men and women, and together. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us, for our salvation, down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to you now, Father, in confident prayer. We bring to you our own needs, the needs of our country, of our church, and of the world. For Pope Francis, and for all who minister in the church, may the Holy Spirit help and guide them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the grace and courage to live our faith, and to care for and support one another in these difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For healing and peace for all who are sick, elderly, and disabled, and for all who have crosses to carry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Pray for vocations to the priesthood and to the religious life. May all who hear God's call have the faith, the courage, and the generosity to say yes, like Mary, the mother of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, <coughs> graciously hear us. Pray for all who come to knock on pilgrimage and for all, and for all they remember in, in prayer here. May they experience many blessings and may their prayers be answered. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for for eternal rest, happiness, and the peace of heaven for all our departed legionaries, active and auxiliary, and all the faithful departed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask Mary, the mother of Jesus, to pray with us as we say together, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we make these and all the unspoken prayers that are in our hearts today with great confidence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now, friends, we will have our collection. And as always, this collection goes towards the upkeep of the shrine and the provision <laughs> of the many facilities that we have here at Knock. And we would be most grateful for your generosity at this particular time. As you know, the many facilities here go to the promotion of uh, pilgrims and their encounter with the Lord here at Knock. So thank you in anticipation for that.
Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, Join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Humbly, we pray that... Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Or Nahir Athornyav, Gnifer Tanim, Gadag the Rioth, Gnyinter the Heller and Thalav, Marinyinter Nyav, Or Naron Lehul Turduninyo, Agas Magunyar Vioche, Marwaham Widja Garvi Hunafain, Sna Likshinigahu, Aksir Shin Oal. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, in us. For the distribution of Holy Communion, can I ask you to remain where you are seated, and the priests and ministers of the Eucharist will come amongst you. Those who can only receive from the chalice can do so at the back of the altar.
So now, friends, we are just going to pray together a prayer that has been composed um, for the, especially for Pope Francis has provided actually a prayer for the Synod of Bishops on the family that is about to take place. And uh, we pray for the success of this Synod. It's a two-year process this year and, of course, next year. We'll see its conclusion. And uh, this prayer is being prayed all over the country today for its success and for those who are deliberating on important issues that affect us all. And we pray. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, in you we contemplate the splendor of true love. To you we turn with trust. Holy Family of Nazareth, grant that our families too may be places of communion and prayer, authentic schools of the gospel and small domestic churches. Holy Family of Nazareth, May families never again experience violence, rejection, and division. May all who have been hurt or scandalized find ready comfort and healing. Holy Family of Nazareth, may the approaching Synod of Bishops make us once more mindful of the sacredness and inviolability of the family and its beauty in God's plan. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph graciously hear our prayer. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest.
panem de celo prestitis dies. Oremus, Deus qui nobis sub sacramentum mirabili, passiones tu e memoriam reliquisti, tribue quesimus, it nos corporis et sanguinis tui sacra mysteria venerari, ut redemptionis tue fructum in nobis iugiter sensiomus, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. So now, friends, can I invite you, where you are able to do so, to stand in honor and reverence of the Blessed Sacrament. We take this time for prayer for deep healing for ourselves, whether it be mind, body, or spirit. Those of you especially, maybe, who have not been able to receive the anointing of the sick today, we take a particular time to pray for you as well. And uh, we bring all our prayers, indeed, for those who may have wanted to be here with us, who are confined to homes, nursing homes and hospitals, all who are need in healing in any way. Lord, touch with your healing hand all who labor and are overburdened among us today. Let your spirit bring to all who are sick wholeness in body and healing of heart. Relieve the sufferings of all who live in continuous pain. Hear our prayers for everyone attending doctors and hospitals. Surround with love those handicapped in mind or body and all elderly people. With faith in your power to bring healing, we pray for children who are sick. Lord, we come to you in our brokenness, wounded in our relationships, wounded by our memory of painful experiences in times past wounded by sin and guilt in our lives today. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. You came to feed the lonely with your company, to feed the sad with your hope. Your love touched all you met. You helped them change and grow. You nourished them with your love and led them to the Father. Your love opened them to the spirit of love. As we meet you, the bread of life, feed us, we pray, with your love. Lead us to the Father. Open us to your Holy Spirit so that we can care for others and help them grow in your love. Stay with us, Lord Jesus, as evening begins to fall and be our companion on our way. Set our hearts on fire with new hope so that we may recognize you in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. We ask you, Lord, to bless all our families. Bless our families as we begin the Synod of Families. We ask you to be with us in whatever capacity you can enter into the lives of those in families where they are riven by strife. Help us, Lord, to believe in you, to hope in you, to love you, to strengthen our faith, to renew our hope and love, and to grant our prayers. Touch with your healing love, O Lord, all who feel the hurt of life's wounds. Long ago, when people prayed to you for healing, you listened to them, blessed them, and answer their prayer. Heal us now of our sinfulness and of the hatred that divides us. Take away our hardness of heart. Open our eyes, which are often blind to the needs of others. Remove our selfishness and our greed. Give us self-control at all times and fill our hearts with your eternal love. Jesus, we ask you now to heal us, to bless us, and to fill us with your peace.
Let the sacrament of your body and blood bring healing to us all, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And so now, friends, thankfully, we will be able to get out for our rosary procession. Just before that, there is has, some medication has been found on the grounds. The Order of Malta outside have it, a little container with tablets. I'm sure somebody's missing those. So if you've mislaid a little container of tablets, if you go to the Order of Malta ambulance outside the basilica, you'll find them there. For our rosary procession, uh, can I ask you to exit the basilica using the back doors where I'm pointing to? at the back of each of the chapels. And if you'd like to join us at the front, please, for our procession. We will conclude our ceremonies then at the Apparition Chapel. It'll be over by five.
O Lord, open my lips. I shall announce your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It was the beginning, now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Mysteries of Light. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the true light which enlightens everyone. He invites each of us to let our light shine. The first mystery, the baptism in the Jordan. Jesus goes down into the water. He makes holy the waters of baptism. God the Father says, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit descends on Jesus as he begins his mission. With Mary, let us realize that we are children of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, 
and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Jesus, forgive us us our our sins, save us us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have most need of your mercy. The second mystery, the wedding at Cana. Jesus performs the first of his signs, his great miracles. He changes the water into wine in response to Mary's concern. She repeats the message of the Father at the baptism of Jesus. Do whatever he tells you. His disciples believe in him. Like Mary, let us do what the Lord tells us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners <coughs> now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, Jesus, Jesus, forgive, forgive us, us our, our sins. sins. Save, Save us, us from, from the fires, the fires of hell. Of hell. Lead, Lead all souls, souls to heaven, especially Lead those who most, most need your mercy. Your mercy. The third mystery, the proclamation of the kingdom of God. With the ministry of Jesus, the kingdom of God has come. God's will is being done as Jesus goes about doing good. Jesus calls all his listeners to a change of heart, a new way of living. This will be accomplished by the forgiveness of their sins. Mary calls us to conversion. Let us listen to that call. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have most need of your mercy. Fourth mystery of light, the transfiguration. Jesus ascends the holy mountain. The glory of God shines in his face. He fulfills all the yearnings of the prophets and he gives meaning to all religious law. God the Father is fully pleased with him. He prepares his disciples for the passion that leads to resurrection. 
Like Mary, let us allow ourselves to be transfigured by the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Jesus, forgive, forgive us, us our, our sins, sins, save, save us, us from, from the, the fires, fires of hell, and lead all souls, souls to heaven, especially those who have most need of, of your, your mercy. mercy.
the fifth mystery, the institution of the Eucharist. Jesus had eagerly looked forward to his last meal with his disciples. Lovingly, he washes their feet. He gives them nothing less than his flesh to eat and his blood to drink. All this he does out of love for his disciples and for all of us. With Mary, let us be united in Christ's saving passion, death and resurrection. Or nahar atar nav, gane for danum godaga the riot, gane to the holler and dalav, marinainter er nav, or naron le hul, tour doing anew, agas matavun or fiaka, mara wahamidene, darve hunda fain, agas nalichini gahu, axer shin o alk, amen. She the vahawira etal on the grosta, tawn tear nilat, is banho tu eder mina, agus is banho tu hura da vriena isa. Anie vwera amarchan gadig, grene pakinish, agus or awash, amen. Shedavaha vwera talon de grosta, tan tir nilat, is banho tu eder mina, agus is banho tu hura da vriena isa. Anie vwera amarchan gadig, grene pakinish, agus or awash, amen. She the Vaho Wera Talon de Grosta, Ton Tir Nilat, Is Banhatu Idermano, Augustus Banhat Hurrit of Rina Isa, and Ye Wera a water jig, Birina Pakianish, Augus Or a wash, Amen. She the Vaho Wera a Talon de Grosta, Ton Tir Nilat, Is Banhatu Idermano, Augustus Banhat Hurrit of Rina Isa. Ye of Wera Hawar Jig, Greer in a pack in ish, Augus on Oar Awash, Amen. She the Vaha Wera at Talon de Grosta, Ton Tir Nilat, Is Banha Tu, Idermano, Augus is Banha Turret of Rina Isa, Ye of Wera Hawar Jig, Greer in a pack in ish, Augus on Oar Awash, Amen. She the Vaha Wera at Talon de Grosta, Ton Tir Nilat, Is Banha Tu, Idermano, Augustus Banha Turret of Rina Isa, and near where a water jig, Gurina Pakianish, Augus and Or Awash, Amen. She the Vaha Wera at Talon de Grosta, Ton Tir Nilat, Is Banha Tu, Idermano, Augustus Banha Turret of Rina Isa, and near where a water jig, Gurina Pakianish, Augus and Or Awash, Amen. She the Vaha Wera at Talon de Grosta, Ton tir nilat, is banaha tu idarana, Augustus banaha turret of Rina Isa. She the Vaha were a talon de grosta, Ton tir nilat, is banaha tu idarana, Augustus banaha turret of the Brina Isa. She the Vaha were a tall on the grosta, Ton tir nilat, is banahad who is a reno, August is banahad turret of Rina Isa. And ye were a water jig, Gurina Pakianish, August an oar a wash, Amen. Glord an aher, August an vach, August an spirit nave. O oh Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have most need of your mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, Holy Mother of God. Be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, 
by his life, death, and resurrection has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant we beseech you that meditating upon these mysteries in the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance always remain with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. <clears throat> Prayer to Our Lady of Knock. Our Lady of Knock, Queen of Ireland, you gave hope to your people in a time of distress and comforted them in sorrow. You have inspired countless pilgrims to pray with confidence to your divine Son. Remembering his promise, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Help us to remember that we are all pilgrims on the road to heaven. Fill me with love and concern for my brothers and sisters in Christ, especially those who live with me. Comfort me when I am sick, lonely, or depressed. Teach me how to take part ever more reverently in the Holy Mass. Give me a greater love for Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Pray for me now and at the hour of my death. Amen. Our Lady of Knock, pray for us. So now, friends, just before I invite Bishop Brendan to bless any religious objects you may happen to have with you, just to, bring, uh, just to thank you all very, very much for being here. A fantastic turnout for, for the Legion uh, today. And I think it must be one of the biggest ever in terms of, of, of uh, the Legion's uh, pilgrimage here to Knock. Uh, so congratulations to you all and thank you very much indeed for turning out in such great numbers. Each of you, uh, of course, with the various banners there that we see from the, from, uh, the local uh, Legion of Mary groups right around the country. I'd like to thank as well our wonderful choir, the Legion of Mary Choir, with our organist Una Nolan. And I think we show them our appreciation for their wonderful music this afternoon. I'd like to thank also the organiser of today's pilgrimage, Alice Creighton from the uh, Dublin office, Legion of Mary Dublin office, and also the president of the Concilium, uh, Sheila Nee Crookron. So I uh, thank them both in the, indeed for uh, all the work that they do, and indeed for all the work that all of you do in each of the Legion of Mary groups. Uh, we all depend on your prayer. And we also depend on your generosity. And I'd like to echo and thank Bishop Brendan uh, for his wonderful homily that brought that out and brought out the humility with which you uh, bring your prayer life in such a wonderful witness to all of us. And long may it continue and congratulations to you all. And thank you so much for all that you mean to us and indeed the country that is very, very proud of you. As uh, I was interested to hear that wonderful um, anecdote in terms of Frank Duff being uh, all the bishops rising to their to their feet to uh, acknowledge him. It's not often you get bishops to rise to their feet, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, present company accepted though. <laughs> uh, but it's a wonderful, that's a, it's a marvellous uh, thing uh, to, to hear that and, and uh, to see right around the world how much the Legion means to people. Uh, Bishop Brendan, thank you for that inspiring homily and uh, for bringing that forward to us. Uh, just before, I uh, wish you a safe journey home. Uh, just Some people have been asking about the all-night vigil on the 8th of December. The all-night vigil will not be taking place. There will be a mini-vigil uh, that evening, and you'll see about it on our website, and it'll be uh, advertised, uh, a mini-vigil. But the all-night vigil will not be taking place because, obviously, the Basilica will be undergoing refurbishment at that time, and it, it is physically impossible but it will return again once the Basilica has been refurbished in 2015. <coughs> and just to keep your uh, mind on that, you can see just over there where I'm pointing to, it's the white flag there outside our information center. You can find out all about our Witness to Hope project. And again, I'd ask you those three things, to pray for the project. Secondly, to find out more about it. You can do that in our information center or on our website or uh, by just simply contacting the shrine itself. 
and also uh, at some point that you may be able to help us to affray with the costs of, of the project going forward. Uh, its central theme and core, of course, is witnessing, witnessing to our faith and the renewal of the faith in the country itself. So I just invite Bishop Brendan now to uh, bless any religious objects you happen to have with you and to conclure, conclude with the final prayer of the pilgrimage. Almighty Father, we're blessing any religious objects that you have now at this point. Almighty Father, bless these medals and religious objects. May the saving presence of Christ be in the hearts of those who use them and in the homes in which they are placed. I bless them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before you do that, Bede has to say something. Fa I'd, yeah, I'd like Father Bede McGregor, Bede. the spiritual director of Concilium, would now like to say a few words. Well, just, um, I'd like to say a few words of thanks. Um, first, I'd like to of course, thank Our Lady for giving us such a lovely day. Thank God for the Legion and there's so many things to be thankful for, but especially now today I'd like to thank Father Richard and Father Pat for the warm welcome they give the Legion pilgrimage every year. So thanks a million, Father Richard and Father Pat. I'd like to second what Father Richard said about uh, Bishop Brendan, Bishop Brendan Kelly from McConry. We thank him for his tremendous encouragement to all of us. His knowledge of Frank Duff, he tells me he's been reading the life of Frank Duff very assiduously and he showed it today. But anyway, we thank him very sincerely. Lastly, Thanks to you all, dear legionaries. You've been a tremendous grace to me personally, but also to all the priests who know the legion and to the whole church in Ireland. But let me tell you, let me tell you something. I worked in India for 10 years, and I heard the legion prayers play, prayed in Hindi, in Telugu, in Tamil, in Malayalam, and all the languages of India. And then I had the privilege of visiting Africa on 11 different occasions for two or three months at a time. And I heard the same Legion prayers prayed in Swahili, in Yoruba, the languages of Africa. Of course, I hear the Legion prayers prayed in the languages of Europe, of Latin America and Spain, Spanish, and in North America. My dear legionaries, it's great that you here in Ireland today give witness to the World Legion. This is where the Legion started, in Ireland. And it's very, very important that we continue to give our witness to Mary and to the Legion throughout the world. So congratulations for all the good you do in your humble, zealous way. We thank you very much. Remember one last thing. Many of you have gone to a lot of trouble to be here today, but let me assure you, Our Lady will go to even more trouble to bless you all, each and every one of you. She won't be outdone in generosity for the pilgrimage you've made today. So God love you, and up the Legion. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Father, in your great mercy, help your pilgrim people to remain close to you in prayer. Give them a true love 
for each other. We have come to knock to give thanks and to petition you for our needs. We have prayed and celebrated the Eucharist together. As we journey from knock, keep alive in us the memory of your love. May we bring from this place strength to carry our burdens and zeal to live the gospel. Through the prayers of Our Lady of Knock, we are confident that you will watch over us always and fill our hearts with your love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I now invite all the priests to join with me in giving the final blessing of the pilgrimage. Agus gomani jie ilochuachtach shivile aher mak agus spirid neiv. Our pilgrimage to Nock Shrine has come to an end. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.